Hello, welcome to the Scratch Coding class. In today's video of the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 guide, I will be showing you how to design your own robots. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. I've been building robots for many years and I've built quite a lot of them, but I know many beginners struggle to find a design and build the robots from scratch without looking at instructions. So today I will show you my tips for a robot design, what makes a good robot design, and I will design my own robot from scratch at the end so you know how it's done. So firstly, this is my robot design process, there are six steps, this varies but for personally for me I use six steps. So the first step is to define the project. So what are you going to do with your robot? Are you building a robot to navigate? Are you building a robot to lift objects? Or are you building a robot to grab objects like we did previously? You need to think about this, it's okay if you want your robot to do multiple things. You just need to think about it when you're building your robot, it's very important. The second thing is you need to gather materials. This is like kind of an optional step in most robot designs, I think it's very important. Now you don't know what materials you're going to use, but if you have a um, idea of how big your robot is going to be, then it helps. You have a, a certain number of pieces and sort out your pieces in drawers, like I mentioned in the first video of the series. The next step is very important, is planning the design. So you need to plan how you're going to make your robot carry out its function. So if you're going to follow a line, for example, you need to add a color sensor. If you want to grab an object, you need to add a medium motor. If you want it to drive, you need to have a driving base. So something very simple like that you need to think about. You can sketch your robot if you want or you can make notes on it, it's up to you what you do. And when you design your robot, do not overcomplicate mechanisms. So in this robot, there are literally only like three gears in the train, and there's no point adding like 20 gears just to grab an object. So think about that. And the next step is called building a base. And you need to build, in most cases, a driving base for your robot, because most robots will need to drive. And it's the foundation for when you attach other components in the next step. So you want to have two large motors, sometimes um, maybe two medium motors, if you have two medium motors. And you need to keep your base compact and do not use too many pieces. And I recommend using frames, and I will show you how to build a driving base later in this video. And the next step is to add additional motors and sensors. So when I built this robot, um, I built the motor first and then I added it to the base. You can do it that way, but definitely don't try to build motors while you're building the dragon base. Do the dragon base first and then add the motor or the sensor. And you want to make it as small as possible. So try not to use too many frames. I just use beams to connect the motor. It's very straightforward, my design of this robot. And the final thing is test and iterate. So there is no perfect robot design, but you need to get your robot to do what it needs to do. So when you're programming your robot, um, say it's not moving forward enough, you, need, you can maybe try moving forward for like one second. And then if it's um, not enough, you move forward two seconds. And if it's too much, then go 1.5 seconds. So it's just trying stuff like that. If your design is not sturdy, for example, when you're building it, just break the design and start all over again. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are my tips for the robot design process. And I will show you what makes a good robot design. Here's a closer look at the grabber robot. And the first thing that's good about this design is it has a low center of gravity. And what I mean by center of gravity is the point on the object where all the weight appears to act. So it will be in the middle of this brick approximately. And that basically means that um, if you have a high center of gravity, the robot's more likely to topple over. But if it's a low center of gravity, it's going to be much more stable when it's driving. And the driving base for this robot is very simple. It's just literally a series of frames and I have built different driving bases in the past, so you can check those out if you just look at a different robot in the series. And if we turn around, uh, the grabbing mechanism is really straightforward. There's nothing like lifting or bucket or anything. Very simple claw, because all it needs to do is just grab objects. That's defining the project, so you don't need to go beyond that. And this robot also has a lot of space on the side, loads of free holes. And those three holes can be used to add even more motors or sensors to this robot and it's very compact at the minute which is good because you don't want your robot to be so big. And the last thing 
that I want to point out is the brick is very accessible so you can basically just press the buttons whenever you want. You don't want um, wires continuously covering the brick and you unable to press the buttons so very easy way to reach the brick and that is everything I want to point out with this robot now let's do some building. So I'm going to set myself a challenge to build a grabber robot but I'm only going to be using the pieces that I did last time and it's going to be a completely different design. So firstly I need to connect the motors and there is no right answer as I said to a robot design so I may be changing my robot design at times I may, I may make mistakes but that's perfectly fine. So I want to use O-frames for the base so something like that and then maybe put the brick on top but I think I need a gap here so I might add a beam in between the two and the easiest way to do that would be to use some um, of these blue pieces so we'll put one here I'll put another one here and then five beam like that and then I can maybe connect the motors like so that that seems good so I'm going to flip this around so you can see better and then we can use these pieces again okay and I maybe want to secure the motors together because at the minute it's a bit flimsy so let's add a beam right here so pins here and then we'll do some pins at the other side I might just add them at the very bottom like that okay motors are very secure now no movement at all now I want to add the brick okay so I thought about this for a bit and what I want to do is maybe add another connection at the bottom of the base and we're going to use a beam over here instead so I think that's a good plan add a beam and then connect them like so or we can maybe just add another H frame and connect that. I think the H frame will probably actually work better. So firstly we need to actually connect the brick. So we'll do that right now. Like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our H frame at the very end. And we need some pins. like so and then I'm going to connect the brick so I want this side to be the front and then this side to be the back so I think the easiest way is to put this one in first and then put this one in like so and then I need to flip this over and then we need to connect these two together could be a pin uh, or a beam here and then a beam over there or I could just use another frame yeah, I might just use another frame for that. Okay, I think something like this, and then we add our H frame. There we go. Nice secure driving base, and all I need to do now is add our third wheel, and I think the third wheel can go somewhere here. Okay, so I want it here, but then this is blocking the way, the brick. So what I can do is I can remove the brick, because I don't need those two connections. I only Because I think there's enough pins already on it. So I'm going to remove the brick. Remove this pin and remove this pin. We can put these blue pins in. Like so, and then we can just add this. Like so. Okay, I might actually need that up one more because at the minute it's a bit tilted, so that's going to be a problem. Um, I could add another beam and then maybe add this onto the beam, so I think that's a good plan. So I think what I can do is I can remove these two flat pins and then put this in like that and then put this in like that. And then I can add another beam. I only needs to be a seven long beam, but I don't have any seven long beams, so I'm gonna have to go for a really long one. Like so. And then all I need to do is just add this to the very bottom.
there we go that works perfectly and then finally I can just add the brick back on again and with this design I can actually put the black pins in again so I'm put the black pin here and then I can put the black pin here and then add the brick and that is the driving base of the new robot complete so now I need to attach the motor and I could just do it at the very side of the brick like this but um, I want it in the middle and unfortunately I don't have enough pieces so I'm going to have to use these three extra pieces and that's all the pieces that I'm going to be using that's not part of this robot so first of all um, I need to add a five long beam like so then add another one of these pieces do the exact same on the other side later so we can put pin here another pin here and just connect the two something like that and I think that's maybe a bit too far out might not be secure enough so we're going to move it in a bit Okay, so that works perfectly. I need to repeat the same on the other side. And there we go, that is the new grabber robot complete. So if we just take a look, this one's very long, but I don't want it to grab straight down and there we go, that is how you design a robot from scratch. So that's going to be it for today's video of the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Guide. I hope you enjoyed this look at designing robots and make sure to subscribe and leave a like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.